Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Rangers Reviews morning briefing on Monday, the 29th of August. Uh, I'm Joshua Barry, joined by Craig Vickers this morning. Craig, how are you doing? How was your weekend? Yeah, it was good. Um, Rangers victory always helps. So, you know, obviously a big game coming up this weekend, but we've also got one um, tomorrow, which we need to focus on first. So, yeah, it should be a good week. Yeah, of course, there'll be loads and loads of build-up uh, over on the website, folks. Remember, you can subscribe for £2 for two months at the moment, um, leading up to the first old firm of the season. It's as good a time as ever to kind of get in on that draw. Uh, lots of analysis, um, features, interviews, everything that we, that we always say. Do go and check that out um, if you want to. And as well, we should mention our new sponsors, Football Prizes. At the moment, you can... Uh, win a signed Paul Gascoigne a custom framed Ranger shirt, which is not a bad uh, prize whatsoever, Craig. For just three ninety five, there's nine additional prizes as well, things like um, instant win football shirts and whatnot, as you can see at the bottom. If you want to enter into that, you can do uh, with the, the link in the description. But also, we'll pick out one um, one comment per day uh, at the end of the show. We'll maybe let Craig pick it today. Uh, one comment that is entered in for free. So get your comments in as ever. Not a bad uh, prize to be in with a chance of winning a signed uh, and framed custom Gaza shirt. Right, let's get on with uh, the football then, Craig. Rangers 4, Ross County 0. Uh, I think for me, Rangers' best domestic showing of the season comfortably so far or by a number of, of metrics. Um, more chances created. I thought the tempo was better. More attackers on the pitch that helped. Some some nervy moments as well, uh, and and we'll talk about James Sands' uh, his tackle at some point. But what was your overriding sense of the game? What 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 did you make of it? Do you agree it was probably Rangers' best showing so far? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I thought I thought there was a lot of um, really good individual performances as well. You know, which which obviously aids um, those sort of displays. I thought Kent was really good. Um, I thought Tillman again was excellent. Um, I thought even Scott Wright. I know he's obviously been been singled out on social media, and I thought he was he was very good as well. You know, I thought there was a lot of really encouraging, you know, parts of the play in terms of being able to, to sustain that tempo. I think that's something that, that Rangers have been guilty of starting really slow in the first half. But yeah, I thought they started the game slow. I think that's what um, Malky McKay sort of touched on after the game in terms of he thought that the county got a foothold, but I think quickly. Especially after the goal came, I, th I think Rangers really established control. And I thought second half that was really good as well. I thought second half, as it was against St. Johnson a few weeks ago, was another step up. And, you know, it's another, you know, 4 like, four nil scoreline as it was against St. Johnston. And that's something that, that Rangers need to continue this season because it's something that, that they lacked last season in terms of putting teams away and, and as in like three and four goals. I think, yeah. as I said afterwards, I think the only... The only four plus goal margin at Ibrox last season was the Hearts game. Um, and that's all right. Yeah, the five no game, in, in yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and that's something that you, you know, obviously, there was some some good away performances last season in terms of you know the six one against Mullerwell and the, the four now against St. Mirren. But you know, it's at home that, that Rangers obviously come up against these teams that they make it really stuffy, and obviously, they do have a solid record at home, but. You know, it's something about boosting your goal difference. And I think you saw that with, with Celtic last season in terms of, you know, they had two six nils in the first first couple of weeks of the season last season. Um and Rangers were playing catch up and goal difference. So yeah, you know, I think it was a, a really good performance and I thought at the top end Rangers were clinical again. Yeah, and I and I guess the main talking point is David Ray's is here, more attacking with only one sitting midfielder. For, for me, if you look at the, this game in comparison to the St. Johnston game, the, the positioning of the midfield, you know, it was Jack and Lundstrom that started that day, but they were both high up the pitch. You know, we covered it at the time, Lundstrom kind of playing um, almost in behind. His, his, his positioning was much higher than, than it had been the week previously against Kilmarnock. Ryan Jack was making those runs up on the right side. Uh, he did that against Hibs away as well. But it was more the personnel for me, Craig, that, that made the difference. When you've got players like Tillman and Lawrence in attacking areas of the pitch, they're natural goal, score, score, uh, goal scorers, easy for me to say. Um, they're going to provide a goal threat when they get the ball high up the pitch. Do, do, do you think, did you do you expect that? Because I didn't expect that at all. I thought it was going to be Davis and Lundstrom. Um, and does that offer a template going forward for how Rangers have to approach these home games? Because as you say, the chance creation was much better in the first half. I don't think that's a coincidence. And you can't afford to to not, especially in these games, kind of be at it from the start. Yeah, yeah, pro pro probably did expect it. But I think I think you, you make a good point in terms of, you know, you can see the midfield to it a little bit higher. And I think you even saw that against PSV and when, when obviously we assessed the, 
the pass map in terms of you know Kamara and Lundstrom's position, they weren't on the toes of the centre backs. You know, maybe yeah. that's something that you know maybe that now that we've established a centre back partnership in terms of having Sands and and Goldson, there's a little bit more trust and especially Sands' ability to to pass the ball to defence. You know, and I think that that you, you you touched on it there about you know the personnel on Saturday and having having Tillman and Lawrence ahead. You know, I think that's probably the best duo that you have. Obviously, mm. if, if if Gio is going with that sort of system. I thought they combined really well as a, as a pair as well, and I thought that crucially they played they played really close to Cholak, and I think that's something that, that, yeah. that we established sort of early on the season about getting players close to Cholak, and we touched on it after you know the games like Livingston and, and Kilmarnock and how how isolated Cholak was and how he's a striker that he needs players close to him, and I think even saw that last season at Malmo. I think even if you look at the the pass map from the game at Ibrox when he scored twice. You know, he wasn't even the most advanced Malmo attacker. He was obviously playing in, yeah. in a front two. And, you know, that shows that he does need to play with, with someone close to him. I think you saw, again, the benefits of that on, on Saturday because I thought it was another really good all-round performance more than anything. And obviously, he scored twice, which is which is great. But I thought all-round, Cholak was excellent again. You know, and I thought that, obviously, that was aided by the team selection. And, you know, as you say, I think this needs to be the, the blueprint going forward, at least at home, hopefully away as well. You know, I think that, that Rangers are a bit more bold in their team selection and they can get these players yeah. closer to Cholak because I think you can see that how crucial it is when, when you, you do yeah. score and then you do get that second because it really just it just kills teams, it deflates teams, especially when they're playing you know, a team like Rangers when it's, when it's difficult to get back. So, yeah, you know, I think, as, as we say, as we touched on, has to be the template going forward and hopefully yeah. they do see it more often. Yeah, one of the nervy moments uh, was James Sands pulling down his mark. I think it was, I think it was Jordi Hirula. Um, which for me, I think you can dispute whether it was a first yellow card, but I think that in isolation is it should be a red card. Equally, you look at the week before, and obviously Rangers uh, with the John Lundstrom red card that kind of changed the game um, in that regard. So I guess someone, if it, they were looking at, you know, in the near future, would say that there's swings and roundabouts with these types of decisions. Malcolm Mackay said after that the referee said if he got it wrong, he'd call him that night. So. I don't know if him and Mal get a wee phone call. Um, but that aside, decisions aside, we like to talk about the detail as well, Craig. There's two elements of Ian's question here, which is a good point. Firstly, Rangers centre-back. One of the reasons Ross County were so open was because they allowed Rangers centre-backs to go in and have the ball. And it's quite common to see teams um, allow an opposition centre-back to have the ball, mark up the other options and kind of say, come on then, what are you going to do? And Ross County did it last season. This season, it's it's taken it to you know the nth degree where Connor Golson was effectively allowed to progress up into the Ross County box. He almost scored after about ten minutes uh, when James Tavernier crossed into the box, but constantly Rangers were able to step into the middle, play through Ross County, um, and and find a winger one v one. Kent one v one, his carry rate was something like eighty percent, really high. I thought is I put out a tweet in the first half, and some people said they didn't think he was playing well, which I thought was. I mean, what do you want him to do? Beat every man and hit the top corner. Um, I thought it was he was excellent. But then the, the flip side of that is that at times, I guess, and maybe this is part of Ross County's plan, it allowed them to quickly hit the ball at the pitch and isolate 1v1 automatically. Um, what, what do you think about that, Craig? Because it could have changed the game uh, early on. Um, what, what do you think about the tactical element of it? Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think you were spot on in terms of it was that sort of risk reward with, with County and against most teams, maybe against the other 10 teams in the league outside the Rangers and Celtic, it's probably a really good ploy in terms of there isn't a sort of, you know, a really deep pool of centre-backs in, in the Scottish Premiership that are excellent in the ball, but I think I think you've even seen that more this season in terms of Golton striding forward, you know, in terms of he's getting into the box even more because, you know, teams are, teams are pretty much, you know, camp, as you say, camping up, camping yeah. inside their own their own half and leaving that lane for the centre backs to step into. But yeah, I think the, the weird thing about Sands is, you know, I was sitting scratching my head as in, you know, how does he sort of get into that position? But I think that's obviously something that the county really exposed in terms of the you know, the identified Sands is maybe the weaker of the, the two centre halves in terms of in the air and, and physical duels. And yeah, you know, I think that, that I don't think you can say that that wasn't, you know, a second yellow card because yeah. it's one of those things that, you know, maybe away from home and maybe if, if County do are surrounding a referee and there's a bit more pressure from the crowd and 
the referee maybe maybe it's a decision, but I don't think he was under much pressure to. And obviously, Malcolm yeah. McKay was pretty much he, he was raging on the sideline. Basically, he was, well. he was frustrated after the game. Yeah, and and there's also there's you know it's important to mention. I think there's a couple of calls from the other point of view that. Uh, Rangers would would say Ross County maybe should have had harsher uh, reprimand for that. Um, but I think, yeah, as you say, talking about the... It's actually a great point here raised by um, mul- multiple man struggling to read that on the Monday morning. We need to be sure when Goldson goes that someone like Lundstrom is dropping into cover. And I thought after that time, uh, Lundstrom did drop in quite a lot. And, and sometimes then in the first half, you didn't see him at the edge of the box as much. But he was kind of making sure that not not necessarily creating a two v one at the back, but making sure there was a player close to cover because in that Sands incident you mentioned, he is just completely isolated on his own. There's no one within twenty yards of him. Um so I think that's an important point to mention. Um but we'll we'll, we'll talk a little bit more um as well. Uh, Jim Jim says that as well, Jim, who uh seen at Ibrox, always a pleasure to pump into Jim. Um, heading up to the gantry is, is right to say that uh, we've not seen Sands much as that last man defender um, and you know I don't think necessarily that it's a mistake everyone makes mistakes in, in games don't they probably just got a little bit too tight um, but certainly doesn't make him a, a discount all the good work he's done in, in recent weeks for Rangers um, some mentions as well that the attack and play Chris says some of the one touch football is a joy to watch it was a lot more um, cohesive and Fluid, I thought Rangers attack and play the positioning. You seen Kent come inside for the third goal. Uh, Cholak was was well uh, supported as you mentioned. You had Tillman drop deep to help progress play for the first goal, but then also get close to the box. Uh, and that I thought lended itself to really good attack and play because Ross County and elements marked up man for man, and obviously they had quite a deliberate mark employ, which is why the centre backs were allowed that freedom to step in uh, to the pitch. But I thought Rangers countered that really well. Um, Let's talk a bit more about Kent and, and Scott Wright. For me, um, Craig, I thought they were both excellent. They were given the freedom at times to pin to the touchline. Um, you've seen that with Kent a lot, going 1v1 with his marker. Scott Wright obviously stands up the cross for, for Cholak. Uh, and I know that you pointed out on Twitter that he's becoming the quite keen of those uh, finishing those cutbacks, just as he did against PSV. But they were fluid and they were allowed to come inside the points not glued to one position. Now, for me, that's when you'll get the best out of Ryan Kent. I think I, I like him outside on the touchline when he's got Barisic coming round and the manager spoke about that post-match because it allows him to go 1v1. And I think in the centre, sometimes it's a bit busy for him. But at other points when the space is there for him to go and turn his marker in the middle, as he did for the third goal, I think that's when you see the best out of him. What, what do you make of their overall performances and how Van Bronckhorst used his kind of hybrid wingers on, on Saturday? Yeah, yeah, I think you obviously, as as you say, in terms of the third goal and and seeing Kent inside, it was more maybe what what you're used to under Gerard last season. And I thought Kent was good at that under Gerard in terms of his, his ability to combine an edge of the box. I thought he really improved in that, especially towards the end of the the title winning season. But I think even on on Scott Wright and he saw it for his assist for Cholak's goal. I think he's almost at his best when he's sort of in that inside position. I think when when Van Bronckhorst took over, and obviously Van Bronckhorst took over and said, look, I'm going to play with with wide wingers, I think we all thought that, that Wright would be a great option in terms of because he's, he's great acceleration and maybe actually Van Bronckhorst sees football would suit him more in terms of he'd have more freedom to run at his markers and, and stretch his legs. But I think, again, what, what you've seen, especially in the last couple of months and even stretching back to last season, is how good Wright is at receiving inside and then turning quickly. And I, I know he obviously didn't, do that specifically for the goal, but he was inside for the goal, and and obviously Ross County left that that channel down the outside, and you know he just uses acceleration because you know he's not pinned to the touchline and he's not, you yeah. know he's not been doubled up on. I think you saw that in the first game of the season against Livingston, especially in the first half when when he picked up the ball and and obviously done a really good job, and you know he's poor that day, but he's poor that day because that's not really his strength. His strength is, is sort of attacking into space and. I thought sort of county set up, so I played into that, and you know, as you say, for the for the um, the Cholak goal, I thought he done well, and but the opportunity arose, and you know, he's used his acceleration to get around the outside, and I thought he was really clever in terms of his cross as well, and I think that's something that's obviously been been drilled in the training ground in terms of Cholak's yeah. movement and what he wants, and it, you know, it's another sort of um, you know, it sort of underlines that for strikers, you do need to you do need a couple of weeks, and you do need. So the training ground to, to to know their movements and you know as I say going back to our first game against Livingston and, and the contrast between 
Cholak's movement and the, and the deliveries into the box, you know, they were they were so out of sync. But I think again on on Saturday you see that you know they are more aligned and yeah, as, as I said after the after the game and you know his Cholak's goal and it was so similar to the to the PSV goal in terms of you know he's pulling back to the penalty spot and I think yeah. the players are getting getting attuned to that now. So yeah, I thought it was a really good individual performance from both wingers. But yeah, you know especially for Cholak and I thought that I thought all those. You know, those sort of factors combined to to make a really clinical performance in the final third. Yeah, and uh, Scott's welder here says Golak, which I think I actually think you came up with that, Craig. I'm going to give you the credit for that. Um, I'm sure I saw that meme from you back about two months ago. Two goals for him. Um, seven goals now is that for Rangers? Eight, seven, six, something like that. Cholak. Yeah. Um, seven. I would say. Yeah. Probably should have checked that. Yeah, anyway, that's, that's, that's terrible from us to just yeah, no, spread the folks in. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Um, two sides to this. Um, if playing 20 minutes without a striker this season at the end of the game is not screaming out for another striker to be brought in, nothing will. Fair point. Obviously, contextual with Morelos, who the manager said he'll speak to on uh, what be yesterday. Uh, he said he'd speak to him tomorrow on Saturday. Um, but that is a valid point, given that Roof will. You'd imagine even when Roof comes back, you, you know, when was the last time he went a sustained period without injuries? Probably the end of his first season at Ibrox. But focusing on Cholak, he's going to score a lot of goals domestically this season. He's a type of player that I don't think Rangers have had in a long time. His first finish was just excellent. It's almost not been talked about enough because the way he twists his body to find the far corner um, is it, so clinical. And it's no bad thing to have a striker that's scoring this many goals early on in their career. Um, f- further, I guess, uh, proof, Craig, that he's really settled in, particularly at home when you get bodies around him and you get players around him. I think teammates are becoming used to his movement, as you say, but he's also um, becoming used to his teammates. And, and, and two more goals um, w- w- will help the confidence even more, although I, I imagine it's sky high. Yeah, and I think... I think the key element, as you say, is is getting bodies around them, and it's something that, that Rangers didn't do in the, in the first few weeks. And yeah, I, I, I think I wrote about after the the Union away leg in terms of you know do Rangers need to sort of reconfigure how they attack to, to suit his strength because I think it was clear that there just wasn't enough bodies around them, and I think that's something that if, when you do play with Morelos, you don't necessarily need to to have that because he is really good at. You know, he's almost sort of two strikers in one in terms of his ability to hold the ball in. But I think that what you see with Cholak is, you know, he is he is decent at, at receiving the ball, but you know, he's he's better when he can receive the ball and he can pop it off first time. And you know, he's not having to spread the play wide. You know, he's able to pop the ball off four, five yards and then and then spin in behind. And yeah, you know, I think his his confidence is sky high at the moment. And and crucially, you know, he, he looks fit as well. I think that, that coming in, obviously, you one of the the sort of um the worries was obviously he was thrown into these games and you know he might start you know flagging after a few and but I think even Saul looking back to his days at Malmo and looking back at his days at Pal, you know, he has a you know he's very fit in terms of you know he's he really ever injured and I think even seeing games he really ever flags, you know, he's really good at especially off the ball, his, his work is terrific as well. He's able to sustain that for long periods. Yeah. It doesn't affect what he does in possession. So yeah, you know, I think I think we all expected that he, he'd score a handful um, domestically, but even after the first few weeks, I think people were saying, look, he, he'll probably score a lot, but maybe his all in performances won't be great. But I think what you've seen in the last few weeks is that he can marry the two together, and I think Reigns are really benefiting from that. And you know, hopefully, there's more to come because obviously that we are sort of short in the striker department now with with Morelos's current situation and, and Roof still out injured. So you know, it will be needed again, and, and there'll be. You know, he, he will carry this sort of goal scoring burden, especially going 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 to Celtic on Saturday. So, yeah, you know, he's made a great start, and you know, long may it continue. Yeah, there's, there's a comment that I've just lost. Uh, so, apologies about that. Lots of comments coming in. Uh, so, thanks for that, folks. About you know the fact that Sakala remains on the bench when Lawrence goes to false nine, um, and and as I say, you know, presuming that Morelos, all the noises are positive. I asked Van Bronckhorst about it in the press conference on Saturday. He said. But his response has been good um, since being omitted from the squad and he was going to have talks with him over the weekend. Presuming that Morelos does come back, the minutes will very much be split between him and Sholak. But I guess the argument would be that 
maybe there is still that need for for a third striker in there. And with, you know, it's going to be a busy weekend of the transfer window, uh, the old firm at the weekend, but I've loads and loads of coverage. So do go over um, to the website and, and make sure you, you take advantage of the offer. Thanks to Connor who did that. Finally subscribe to the website this morning. Good man, Connor. Um, as I say, lots of content um, over there on this week and every single week because it's going to be a busy couple of months with all these games before the World Cup. Um, I've seen the schedule go up and there's loads and loads of big games. So looking forward um, to that. We'll, we'll just get through a few more comments, um, Craig. I want to touch quickly on the, the Lawrence and Tillman um, balance. Uh, we said that is what you need going forwards. Tillman didn't score on on Saturday, but I thought he was he was excellent, particularly for the first goal, his ability to play through pressure. And Lawrence, uh, one of one of his best performances so far for Rangers, and he's had quite a few of those. I think he's actually been quietly very good since coming to the club. But you can see what he, he he's a more intelligent player than I thought he would be. And to to qualify that, you see when you see a player shot map like Lawrence, you maybe think he's going to be a bad decision maker, always try it, but. I actually don't think he, he does. He obviously has that in his locker and that's a weapon. He's hit the bar a couple of times. You see him away at PSV where he's so close to scoring what would have been, you know, an iconic goal in Europe for Rangers and um, hit the bar at home recently. I can't remember against who. And then as well, scored that goal against PSV from a free kick. So you can see the value of that asset in, in pieces. But I thought as well as intelligent link up, his pace, his ability to go 1v1 is, is all be- better than I thought. What, what have you made of his start? Um, and, and how, how big a player do you think he will be this season? Because I think a lot of the attention has not actually been on Tillman. But Lawrence, quietly, I think, with his numbers and his performances, has shown that he's going to be hard to not include in this team as well. Yeah, I think yeah. you can even see that in the, in the numbers he's produced and the goals that he's scored in terms of, obviously, looking back to, to Hibs last weekend, and that was a pretty pretty crucial goal. And obviously, we didn't hang on the end, but, you know, looking back. And yeah, I think that's something that when you look at the, the summer signings and and obviously people are singing the praises of Cholak and Tillman, but, you know, it's a good thing that we're sitting here and we are praising the, the individual performances of these guys because, you know, it allows some, someone like, like Lawrence to sort of fly under the radar because I think he's been, been equally as good because yeah, yeah I think you, you see it as well. He's, he's quality in the final third. And I think that's something that when you are bringing in an, an experienced 28-year-old, yeah, 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 20, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's the same. I think Cholak's the same age as well, and there is sort of merit in, in bringing in these guys because they are, you know, the, the way that they sort of operate, they are very assured of themselves. I think you can see that with Cholak as well, and yeah, I think that's something that I don't think there was much, much worry about Lawrence sort of assimilating to this Rangers team, mostly because he's played at a, a really good level and a really sort of high pressure environment at Derby as well, and I thought his skill set. It's, it's sort of translated very well into, into the role he's played. And I think obviously when, when we when we sort of first identified Lawrence, he obviously predominantly played played his, played um played wide for Derby and, mm-hmm. and obviously now that, that he sort of came inside and and obviously had sort of spells as, as a sort of second striker at Derby, but I think you can see his quality. Just his quality in the final third, his ability to combine, his ability to run forward, you know, he's re- very sort of um He's got a very sort of wide skill set in terms of what he, what he produces in the in the final third, and I think you can see that again. I think you saw it for the um, I think Davies's goal when he sort of he makes that run and, and he sort yeah. of lets it trickle along him. Um, so yeah, I think he, he is very sort of intelligent in the final third. I don't think he, you know he's, he's he's setting shots for the sake of it, but even when he does, you know he's, he tends to work the goalkeeper. I know he's obviously had somewhere it's sort of um, it's flew well over the bar, but even thinking back to his his, his um free kick against PSG, you know it's. PSV, sorry. I know that obviously the goalkeeper should do better, but you know yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty wicked shot, and I think he does he does test the keeper a lot. I don't think he's he's sort of um he's wayward with his shooting, but you know no. I think he, his intelligence in the final third is really good in terms of his ability to combine, his ability to, to lay the ball off and, and when to shoot and to make that movement again. You saw that against Hib last week, so yeah, I think he's made, he's made a great start to to life at Rangers as 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 has sort of Cholak and Tillman. So, yeah, you know, as I say, with, with Cholak, long may that continue. Yeah, perfect. Well, we're going to leave it there, Craig. Just a word, I think I'm going to give a question of the day or point of the day to multiple man. He's raised a few great points. Um, so to be included in the signed Gascoigne Rangers shirt draw, just DM the Rangers Review Twitter account with your email, uh, multiple man. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that is a, is a good start to your Monday. But thanks very much for all the interaction in the comments. We'll be back tomorrow looking ahead to Queen of the South. We'll have loads of 
build up this week to the old firm uh, lots of reaction and coverage as well of all the transfer window news so do keep up to date head over to the website two pounds two months at the moment uh, thanks very much for joining us we'll speak